remembering that Elvis Presley was the highest rated network documentary segment ever, Al Capone's vault for all the burlesque trappings became and still is the highest rated syndicated special ever. It was a great idea, two hours. They had found this vaulted space underneath his old headquarters in, in uh, South Chicago in the Lexington Hotel. And the idea was to open it on live television. And so the way I formulated the show was two hours. So I said, let's do an hour on the, uh, the gangsta era, the Roaring Twenties, Al Capone. <coughs> And then the other hour would be the digging and the finding, and we expected bodies and money and weapons, and the damn thing was empty. Yeah. But uh, so how did this? Uh, it was a rating success, but how did this affect your your uh, career? Because this is for the archives. It wasn't a rating success. It was a historic broadcast, watched by more people than the Super Bowl. It was, we did a 70 share in Chicago. We did a 65 share, I think, something like that in Los Angeles, and everybody knew that the damn thing was empty by then, and they still watched. Uh, it was the highest rated syndicated special ever. It was broadcast live in 12 different countries. But I also knew that all of my former colleagues, all the snobs who had kind of given me the cold shoulder during those years at ABC, were watching it and ridiculing me. So I really. I was humiliated when the show ended in Chicago. It was live, as I said. I, I went across the street with uh, my wife, Cece, at that time. We weren't married yet. Uh, maybe we were married. No, we weren't married. We were about to get married. So we went across the, to the, uh, the Mexican restaurant, and I got drunk on tequila. I went back to the, to the hotel, the Hyatt Hotel, and I was, I was going to go back to my boat and because you didn't know anything about success in those days. Uh, so I knew that I had wrecked my reputation, that I had fallen into the trap where I was exactly the caricature that everyone said I was, and I'd never work again in the business. And then uh, that's the way I, I fell asleep drunk, and uh, I didn't take any phone calls, I didn't take any messages, didn't let anyone in. Uh, CC kind of uh, opened the door the next day to the room service guy, who was, I never forget him, was an old black man, old thin black man, he looked like the kind of guy, had the kind of dignity that the old railroad porters did, you know, real, uh, very composed mm -hmm. and, 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 and smart and dignified, and he pushes in, he sees me looking down, he says, puts his arm around me at some point and says, uh, don't worry son, they're not going to blame you for the bad news that the damn thing was empty, and he, <laughs> he handed me 22 messages. I had uh, 22 job offers the next day. So, you know, what was the low point of my career became the start of a whole new career. 